the first the last. and the last, the Alpha, the Omega, yeah. the beginning and the end, right. is the same yesterday, is the same today, it will be the same tomorrow. He's the same forever. Amen? Come on. Hallelujah. You can't say that about most of us. Amen? I guess any of us, we change from time to time. Yes, sir. You ever ran across somebody that maybe is a close friend? Yeah. And after you got home, you thought, they sure acted different today. They sure acted funny today. Right. You won't get that from Jesus. Amen? Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And most of the time, they don't know they acted funny. They just had stuff on their mind or something else was going on in their life. Amen? Right. Hallelujah. But Jesus, you can always count on Him. Yes, sir. I want to talk to you this morning about a word that the Lord dropped into my spirit. And... This was on New Year's Eve. I guess it was probably New Year's Day in the early hours of the morning. When I had a dream and the Lord visited me in the dream. And without going into much detail as far as the specifics, the most important thing is that as I was in this dream and in this certain place, there was a voice that came to me. And the voice spoke, and it wasn't a scary voice. You know, the enemy doesn't always show up as a scary voice. Amen? Really? Kind of Come seductive, on. maybe. Soft-spoken. Yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> and the statement that the voice made was along these lines. You're doing the same thing as you've been doing. And it wasn't so much as a, as a question as it was a statement or as it was a... a... Uh, a... a uh, <laughs> trying to compel me to change what I was doing. Yeah. As it was trying to suggest that I do something different. Maybe look for something new. Been doing the same stuff. Have you ever felt like I just do the same stuff over and over and over? Amen. And when I began to, I started to open my mouth to answer the voice, but before I could, it was like lightning hit me and there was a word dropped into my spirit from the Lord. And whenever it happened, it was as if there was the water of the Word, when I opened my mouth, began to pour out Scripture after Scripture after Scripture. Uh, about something that most of the church world, as far as the percent, largest percentage of it, not all of it, thank God, but as far as the largest percentage of it has completely kicked this to the side. And this, you don't hear this very much anymore. Right. Used to, you used to didn't have to hear it from Grandma and Grandpa because you saw it in their life. Right. But in the church world today, they always have something new, you know, because they're always getting bored. Yeah. That's what I said earlier about when did Jesus cease to be enough. Amen? All, right. All the church is trying to figure out what they're going to do new for 2013. Right. I just wish we could do the old stuff we're supposed to be doing in 2012. Amen? Amen? Let alone come up with some new stuff. Right. But whenever that word, the Lord dropped that word into my spirit and I, instead of answering this voice with my own wisdom, with my own reply, the word of God began to pour out of me and more as... The more the word came out, the more faint the voice became that I heard. Mm. Until finally I couldn't hear the voice any longer. Yeah. And it was as if there was a fire rolling inside of me. And I couldn't stop these scriptures from coming out. When I woke up, it was the same way. I was so stirred in my spirit. And this week, everywhere I've turned, everybody I've turned on, everything that I've read has brought me right back to this spot. Sometimes you don't know what you're going to preach. Amen? Right. There have been times that I've took the pulpit on Sunday morning and I've had two sermons, didn't know which one of them I was going to preach. Amen? Uh -huh. There have been times on Saturday night I'd be scratching my head because I've been praying all week, reading the Word all week, thinking, Lord, what in the world am I going to preach this week? Give me something to give to the people. That's what I always pray. Amen? Because I can't give you anything that will help you unless the Lord gives it to me first. I always pray, Lord, give me something to give to the people. Come on. So everywhere I've turned this week, this has slapped me in the face. Something that most of the church world, as I said, has kicked it to the side. Uh -huh. Many times what we call a rut, or what we call, or what some may call a repetitive action, God calls being faithful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And now this is a word that you don't hear about much anymore. Yeah. And those of you who do hear it, you're probably thinking, you mean that's it? Some of the people that I posted on Facebook about what the Lord had, had dropped something in my spirit, but I didn't feel led to share it yet because I wanted to share it. I only shared it with one person before I shared it with you all because I wanted to share it with you all. Yeah. And I only shared, I shared it with Brother Wayne because he, he, he got in touch with me and said, oh, i got to know what this is. So I shared it with him. 
but he didn't share it with anybody else. Right. So those that have been hanging out there all week thinking, what's it? What was it? What God? What God revealed to him? Then they're going to hear the word faithful, and they're going to think, is that it? Oh yeah, that's it. God puts a high premium on being faithful. Amen. We don't think so much about it anymore. Because the church has become so lackadaisical in the things that they do. So lukewarm in the things. So shifty. Right. So double-minded. Right. That being faithful, they don't, even, they don't even realize what that is anymore. Amen. Amen. See, Grandma and Grandpa, they were faithful. Yes, sir. Amen. They were faithful. They didn't miss church. Mm -hmm. Amen. They were faithful. They always gave. They were faithful. They always prayed. They were faithful. They always read the Word. They were faithful to God. Amen? All right. So this is a lost art. Maybe that's not exactly how to say it. It's certainly something that is lost in the generation that we see today. Yes, sir. Amen? True. Why? Why does the church have so much? One of the reasons the church has so much problems being, and this is certainly not all of the reasons, but one of the reasons is because the church gets bored. Yes, sir. They get bored. That's why pastors have to try to think up something new. Some kind of a new program. Some kind of a new catchphrase. Yeah. Some kind of a new, you know, something to get people excited. Because if I don't keep the people in the pew excited, they may go down the street and find another church that's doing something more hip, doing something more modern, doing something more up to date, doing something that'll get them excited. I got news for you today. If Jesus don't excite you, it don't matter what church you go to, you need prayer. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Jesus should be enough to excite us today. Jesus should be enough to get us to come to the house of God. Jesus should be enough to get us to give in the offering when the offering plate is passed if we can. Jesus should be enough to get us to pray every day. We shouldn't have to have something turn us on to get us excited. Come on. Jesus should be enough. Yes, sir. Jesus should be enough. That's the truth. And whenever He is enough, you will be faithful. Absolutely. But because He's not enough anymore, because He's not exciting enough anymore, Amen? Right. The church has to make Him some kind of more modern. You know, this is a more modern time, Pastor. We have to ha have uh, easier versions of... We have to have easier Bibles to read. Amen? Right. We have to have easier, uh, easier yeah. books to read. We have to have better sermons. We have to have better music. Those old songs that you sing, though, they, we need something more modern, something more hip, something more pop, something more rock. You just need something to get you excited because Jesus don't excite you. Amen? Amen? I see it. Jesus doesn't excite most of the church. Yeah. Largest percentage of them. So you have to keep them excited. Mm -hmm. right. They have a hard time being faithful if you don't. If you don't, they have a hard time being faithful mm -hmm. if you don't. That's the word that the Lord dropped in my spirit this week. Faithful. Mm -hmm. Think about that this morning. The Bible says in Proverbs, the 20th chapter, the 6th verse, you don't have to go there. You can write it down because by the time you, I'm only going to read one verse. By the time you get there, I'll be gone. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Well, we don't have no trouble seeing that today. Amen? Right. It's nothing for you to run into two or three people a week, maybe two or three people a day bragging on yourself. Yes, sir. Amen? That's true. Talking about how good, you know, they're all eating a bag of chips. Exactly. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. I, me, my, mine. That's what we preached last Sunday morning. Amen? Oh, and by the way, you know all those sermons we've been preaching about making a difference? Yeah. You can't make a difference, not a significant one, until you get this right here this morning. Until you be faithful. Until you're faithful to God, you ain't going to make a difference in people's lives. If you're as wishy-washy, if you're as double-minded, if you're as unstable as the weather, how do you think you're ever going to convince somebody that what you've got is real? How do you think you're ever going to convince somebody to want what you've got? Faithful. People notice if you're faithful or not. Right. We got a bunch of people that's in church one morning, one week, in church, and out of church the next week. Right. We've got people that are living for the Lord one week, living for the devil the next week. Right. We've got people singing praises on Sunday and cussing on Monday. Right. We need some people that are faithful. Amen. God's a faithful God today. Amen. And He's looking for some faithful people, Brother Scott. Yes. He's looking for some faithful people. Right. God is faithful. The Bible tells us over and over and over that He is a faithful God. Yes, he is a faithful God. He, and I, they don't just have to tell me that. I've experienced it. Yes. I know from my 46 years of living, He is a faithful God. He has been faithful to me. He's looking for some people to be faithful to Him. Come on, brother Amen. Billy. Preach it. So this verse here says that most men, <laughs> do you hear what it said? Uh -huh. Most men. Most men. Most men. 
I try not to lump the whole church into the whole thing, so I say most of the church. Well, the Bible uses that kind of language. It says most men. In other words, the largest percentage of them will proclaim everyone his own goodness. This is still Proverbs 20 and 6. But a faithful man, who can find? Come on, brother. But a faithful man, who can find? Most men will boast of their own stuff. That's right. Of their own goodness. Of their own wealth. Yes. Of their own knowledge. Amen. I have people, and I guess the Lord sends them by my way just to get me on my knees to pray for them and to pray for my attitude. But I have people come by my way more times than I like that tend to boast of their wisdom of the Word and the deep things of God. Uh -huh. But they don't know how to be faithful. All right. I told Reese the other day, first I worry about learning how to live for the Lord. Before I went around worrying about all this other deep stuff that you're trying to spread to everybody else. Can't be stable. Can't be faithful. Listen, there can't nothing else be said about me once I'm dead and gone, I hope. And pray somebody can say he was faithful. He was faithful. Amen. Come on. A faithful man who can find. Turn over. Go back just a little bit to Psalms, the twelfth chapter. Psalms, the 12th chapter, the first verse. Talking about how rare it is to find faithful people. Psalms 12 and 1 says, Help! That's rescue us! Save us! Help us, Lord! For the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Did you hear that? Amen. The faithful fail. Yeah. from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. Come on. The word faithful there means to be trustworthy. It means to be sure. It means to be true. It means to be persistent. It means to be consistent. Oh my goodness. As a pastor, I know how rare that is. Amen. Amen. Come on. The word fail there, see it says the faithful fail. From among the children of men. It means yeah. that they are disappearing. Come on. It means, Brother Sleaze, that they are becoming extinct. All right. Can't find them. Come on. They're rare. Mm -hmm. What did Proverbs say? A faithful man who can find. Right. Most men will boast of their own goodness. That's right. But a faithful man who can find. Yes. You can find people talking about all kinds of things today. But how many can you find talking about Jesus? Yeah. Amen. Come on. Come on. How many can you find? How many? How many Christians get uncomfortable when you do start to talk about Jesus? Amen. Right. As long as you're talking about football, basketball, baseball, soccer, hockey, hunting, TV, Hollywood, yeah. what's in the theater? Come on. They can carry that conversation along with you, but the more, the sooner you start talking about Jesus, mm -hmm. as soon as you start talking about the Word, you lose them. Right. Faithful. Talk about being faithful this morning. Amen? Right. God's looking for a faithful people. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And you don't know how much I appreciate the faithful people that we have. All right. That support this church, that come to this church, that pray for this church. Amen. Out of all of the... If there's, if there's, I've learned a lot of things as being a pastor, but one thing I've learned is how people have trouble being faithful. Mm -hmm. In a lot of things... But out of all of the newsletters that we send out, out of all of the tapes and the CDs that we send out, out of all of the people that we have listening to the radio station and to the, to the programs that are on the AM and FM station, the internet stations, mm -hmm. out of all those people, we have a very short list of people that give. All right. Of people that we ever hear from. <clears throat> of people that are faithful. But Ernie Vincent wrote a song and said, Be faithful in all you know, and the Lord will see you through. Amen. All right. Faithful. Think about that word this morning. It means to be true. It means to be persistent. It means to be consistent. Right. And it's rare to find people. Like I said, out of the massive number of people that we minister to each week, we have a very short list of those that are faithful. People have trouble being faithful. We have trouble being faithful in prayer. Yes. Because other things come up. Amen. They have trouble being faithful to the Word. Either because it's boring, it doesn't excite them, or it's too hard to read. Amen. That don't 
That don't carry any weight with me because these kids back here can read it. Oh, Amen. Wow. Brother Tyler's been reading it since he's five. I've been reading it since I was five. Mm -hmm. Amen. So don't tell me that this Bible is too hard for you to read. Uh -huh. Maybe you're just too lazy. You don't want to put forth the effort that it takes to read it. Right. You want Jack and Jill went up the hill to get a pail of water. Amen. Come on. God don't talk like that. That ain't the way His Word reads. God is faithful, and He's looking for a faithful people. Right. Let me ask you a few questions this morning. What happens this morning if you're not faithful to your job? Mm. You get fired. How's it know? Amen. And most people are faithful to their job because they know what will happen if they're not. Right. Now, if they had one of those jobs, if they exist anyway, where it didn't matter what time you drug in, it didn't matter what kind of work you did when you got there, it didn't matter what you did, you still got your paycheck, and your job was secure. I doubt very seriously that very many people would be as dogmatic about being on time as they are. They would be as dogmatic about crossing every T and dotting every I while they were at work as they are. But because they know the consequence if they're not, yeah. it keeps them faithful to their job. Amen. <clears throat> people more faithful to their job than they are God. That's right. Amen. True. How about marriage? What happens... If you're not faithful in your marriage, what happens if the husband is not faithful to the wife or the wife is not faithful to the husband? What happens if you're not faithful to the vows? Can anybody say divorce? Good there. Good there. Amen. Can anybody say alimony, child support? Mm -hmm. Can anybody say a broken family, a broken home? Amen. Because you were not faithful. And if we've ever seen that, we're seeing it today. The divorce rate in the church is as high as it is in the world. It used to be like that. Used to admit something to stand before God and say, Till death do us part. Mm -hmm. Or until I get tired of you. They were to add that in there now. Right. Amen. I'll be with you until death do us part. Or if I get tired of you, I don't like you anymore. Mm -hmm. I fall out of lust with you. Because that's what most, a lot of them, you know, they fall into lust. They don't fall into love. Mm -hmm. They find out real quick that doesn't last very long. Amen. Especially if you stay with them for very many years. They start getting gray. They start getting fat. They start getting bald. They start losing their teeth. All right. Faithful. Faithful. There's something to be said today about being faithful. Amen. Faithful in your job. Faithful in your marriage. Right. What happens today if you're not faithful in paying your light bill? <laughs> cut it off. They cut the lights off. And most people, not all of them, maybe not even most, a small percentage of people, would not be so concerned about paying their light bill if they didn't know, hey, if I don't get this light bill paid, my lights are going to be cut off. Right. I'm going to be sitting here in the dark. Because they know the consequence of not being faithful to paying the light bill. Right. They know the consequence of not being faithful to going to their job. They know the consequence of not being faithful in their marriage. Right. There are consequences today for not being faithful to these things. There are consequences today for your lack of faithfulness to the Lord. Amen? Now you might say today, Brother Billy, are you saying I'm not saved? I didn't say that. I didn't say you weren't saved, but there are consequences to not being faithful. At the very least, it will stunt your spiritual growth. Yeah. If you think you're going to grow spiritually just getting to God when you got time, you're sadly mistaken, my friend. Come on. At the very least, it will stunt your spiritual growth, but at the most... You'll just continue to drift away from God until finally you're lost and don't know it. Yes, sir. Or lost and don't care. Right. Amen. And it all started because of your lack of faithfulness to Him. All right. All being faithful is important today. Yes, sir. Amen. Being faithful is important today. Listen to this. Go with me to Matthew, the 24th chapter. <clears throat> I'm not going to keep you very long today because we're going to be on this at least next Sunday too. Matthew, the 24th chapter, <clears throat> and the 45th verse. Matthew 24 and 45. It says, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Did you hear that? Amen. Verily, that I, verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall 
and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and to drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and point his, him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Consequences to not being faithful today. But when the Lord comes and He finds the faithful servant, when He cometh, find Him so doing. Doing what? Doing what He called Him to do. Doing what He left Him to do. What? Doing what He commissioned Him. Doing what His Word tells us to do. When He finds Him being faithful to Him. Amen? Come on. This other servant, this slothful servant, he didn't believe there was any consequences to not being faithful because he done gave up on his Lord coming back. He didn't think he was going to come back. He tarried too long. Many people today have given up on the fact that the Lord's coming back. He's tarried too long. He's been gone too long. I've heard it too long. i got news for you. He's coming. Amen. Amen. But even if He don't come in your lifetime, right. you're fixing to die. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, you're fixing to die. Amen. Were you faithful? Or were you double-minded? Come on. Blessed is that servant that whenever his Lord comes, he finds him doing that which he was supposed to be doing. Yeah. Amen. That's rare today. Yeah, Amen. Sure. That's rare today. And let me ask you this question. How many times does our faithfulness to God depend upon the actions of others? That's the way it is a lot of times. Whether we're faithful to God or not depends upon the circumstance. Depends upon others. Depends upon what's going on. Mm. When it really should only just depend on our relationship with Him. What He's called us to do. All right. What He's led us to do. What His Word has told us to do. Our faithfulness with Him should not be directed by the actions of others or by the circumstances that are around us. That's right. We find people all throughout the Word of God who were faithful to God even when times were bad. Mm. Listen, there are people that can be faithful to God as long as things are good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And there's some people that can't be faithful to God when <clears throat> things are good. Yeah. Think about that. That's true. The only time they can be faithful to God is when things are rough and they feel like they got one foot in the grave and one foot out. Right. And they're crying out for mercy and they need God more than they've ever needed Him before. Yes, so then you find them being faithful. They're faithful to pray. They're faithful to read the Word. They're faithful to go to church. But the minute things turn around and things start going good, they wax fat and they kick like Israel did out in the wilderness. Right. Amen. True. But how many times do we allow circumstances and things to affect our faithfulness to God? God's looking for people that are faithful yes, sir. today. Amen. Think about these three things that I'm fixing to tell you. Two of them depend upon God and they are God sent. The third one depends completely upon you. Matthew 22 and 14 says, For many are called, but few are chosen. I want you to think about those two words. Yeah. Called and chosen. Now those have nothing to do with you. God does that. God calls you. You don't call yourself. Right. God chose you. Amen. Amen. For God so loved the world. He chose this whole world. Amen. To give His only begotten Son for. Called and chosen. But there's another one that the book of Revelation throws in there that completely depends upon you this morning. Yeah. Of course, with the help of the Lord, but He's not going to force you. Revelation 17 and 14 says, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for He is the Lord of lords and the King of kings, and they that are with Him are called, chosen, and faithful. All right. Did you hear that? Amen. Called and chosen, those two are actions by the Lord. Uh -huh. That last one, that faithful, you got something to do with that. Yes, sir. You choose whether to serve God. You choose whether to go to heaven or to go to hell. You choose whether to give in the offering. You choose whether to be faithful to church. You choose whether to pray every day. You choose whether to read the Word every day. You choose whether to be faithful or not. Absolutely. In a marriage, you choose to be faithful. You have to choose, especially in the world that we live in today. Exactly. With the spirits, you know, so thick that you can cut them with a knife. Amen. Perverted spirits. Yes, sir. You have to choose to be faithful to your spouse because the devil, the enemy will present many opportunities for you not to be. Yep. So you have to choose to be the same way with your relationship with the Lord. 
The, the enemy will present to you situations for you not to be faithful to God. You have to choose whether you're going to be faithful to God or whether you're going to give in, be double-minded, or just be unstable in all your ways and choose something different. You choose. Yes, sir. These people here that were with the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings that John saw in Revelations, the 17th chapter, it says they were called, they were chosen, and they were faithful. Right. You choose whether to get up and go. You choose whether to give. You choose whether to pray. You choose whether to fast. Amen. And you can blame all of the things that you failed on on somebody else, but when it comes down to it, you chose. Yeah. I chose. Amen. Come on. Psalms 31 and 23 says, O oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful. Psalms 101 and 6 says, Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. Sounds to me like God puts a pretty high premium on being faithful yes, today. Sir. Amen. True. Faithful. Faithful. Yes. Think about that. In Matthew, the 25th chapter, Jesus is giving us an example of how it is. And He says this is the way to be in the kingdom of heaven. Speaking of the faithful servant and the slothful servant, listen to the words that He says as they enter in. And I'm sure you all know these by heart. Matthew 25 and 21, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thee in into the joy of the Lord. Now this is kind of a rare peek into, if you've ever wondered, well, what are they going to say as I enter into heaven? What are, what are, my, what are the words I'm going to hear as I cross over Jordan? And I enter into the other life. Well, maybe these may be the words that you hear. Maybe the Lord's given us a glimpse you're going to hear. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Amen. He didn't say, well done, thou good and famous servant. He didn't say, well done, thou good and talented servant. Now, don't get me wrong. God loves talent. He gave you any talent that you've got. It's not of your own making. Amen. He didn't say, well done, thou good and rich and prosperous servant. <laughs> he said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Faithful. Persistent. Consistent. Amen. Sounds to me like God puts a very high premium on being faithful today. See, it's part of God's nature to be faithful. Yes. And when you accepted Jesus and He came into your heart and that old man became all things, you know, they became new, old things passed away, all things became new. Somewhere inside of you, no matter how lackluster you are, no matter how shifty you are, no matter how double-minded you are, somewhere inside of you there's some faithfulness wanting to get out. All right. Your spirit, your spiritual man longs to be faithful to God. You just keep him pushed down so far you don't know it. Amen. With the worries of the world and the cares of the world and everything else you think that comes first. Faithful. Your spiritual man wants to be faithful to God. God puts a high premium on being faithful. It's part of His nature. It's part of His name. Revelation is the 19th chapter and the 11th verse. Revelation is 19 and 11. Listen to what it says over there. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him, the Bible says, was called what? Faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Oh, talking about Jesus. Listen what it says. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in white, clothed in, excuse me, fine linen, white and clean. Now, what did it tell us over there? We just read where those that were with him were called, chosen, and faithful. He's talking about the same group here that are. Clothed in 
fine linen, white and clean. So see, there's that faithful bunch again. You heard back in the old west days they had something called the wild bunch or something. This is the faithful bunch. I'd rather be part of the faithful bunch than the wild bunch. Amen? Amen. Faithful. These people were faithful to Him. The Bible teaches us that Moses was faithful, that Abraham was faithful, that David was faithful, and that's only just a few of them. You say, but Brother Billy, wait a minute. Those men messed up. Those men fell down. Those men made mistakes. Yeah, but that ain't got to do nothing with being faithful. They, they did make mistakes. They did mess up, but they got up, dusted off, and kept on going. I ain't talking about being perfect today. If you wait for sinless perfection, you're going to die trying. Amen. But they were faithful. When they messed up, they got up and they went on. When David messed up, and I don't know if you can mess up much worse than he did. Amen. He said, oh God, forgive me. I've sinned against you. He was faithful to God. Right. You'll fall. You'll fail. You'll mess up. Well. But will you still be faithful? Will you still get up and go on? Yeah. Will you still press forward? Will you still reach forth Toward the prize, the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus. Doesn't mean that you're perfect. It means that you're faithful. Hard for me to preach this without talking about some of the little widow women that we have that send in an offering the first of every month. And the big ministries out there, they would probably think, well, that's piddly of nothing because they don't have a lot to see in. But they're faithful in what they have. We could learn a lesson in that today. We could learn a lesson in that today. That's right. Over the holidays, we went and we visited with Sister Desi. And she's like us. She don't live in a big mansion. We didn't trip over no diamonds or no pots of gold as we went into her house there to visit with her. She's just a little widow woman, simple. Mm -hmm. Every month, without fail, for years, we get her envelope in the mail with a little bit of money in it. She's faithful. That may not mean nothing to you, but it means something to me, and I guarantee you it means something to God. He puts a high premium on being faithful. Amen. You can try to skip through this life and put God on the back burner if you want to, but I, I want to hear on that day, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Well done, thou good. There's something to be said today about being faithful to the house of God. Now, I'm not talking about when you're sick. My goodness, I know everybody gets sick and has to miss. But in the day that we live in, people don't even have to be sick. They just soon do something else. They soon go ball game. I, I, a song leader told me some time ago, a song leader in their church said he will make it to their church on Thursday nights because one of their kids had ball games. Their pastor understood. I wonder sometimes how much God understands that kind of stuff. Amen. All right. Daniel was faithful. How about that? The Bible says in Daniel, the sixth chapter, the fourth verse, and I'm closing. Then the presidents of the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not. But they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much he was faithful. He was faithful. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. Even his enemies. Even his enemies said, and yeah, Daniel's faithful. I wonder what our enemies say today. I wonder what those that we fellowship with or that we come in contact with on a daily basis or maybe that are at your jobs or maybe your family members. I wonder if they think, well, well, they sure are faithful. That's what they thought about Daniel. Even when the king said, don't pray no more to nobody but me. The Bible says, as he had done before. See, there's that faithfulness. That persistence. That, the, that voice probably spoke to Daniel too that spoke to me in my dream on New Year's and said, you're doing that again. Daniel probably said, yes sir, I sure am. Got down on both knees. Opened up his windows. Amen. Prayed toward Jerusalem like he had done before. It would do us all some good today to get in that kind of a rut. Being faithful in our prayer life. Being faithful in the reading of God's Word. Daniel was a faithful man. 
He was faithful to pray. God was faithful to him. Amen. Threw him into the fire, into the lion's den. He didn't go in the fire furnace, did he? The Hebrew children went in the fire furnace, but they were faithful too. Amen. In closing, this is the last scripture I'm going to give you today, but look at this. 1 Samuel 2 and 35. See what God was looking for in a priest there. God said, I will raise me up a faithful priest. He didn't say, I'll raise me up a famous one. I'll raise me up someone of this fine line of wealthy people. He said, I'm going to look for me somebody that's faithful. God wants somebody that's faithful. True. When you go looking for a pastor, look for somebody that's faithful to God. Yes. Not just got the long pedigree or the resume or the resume or the, the PhDs, but somebody that's faithful to God. Somebody that's steadfast in their relationship with the Lord. Amen. He said, I'm going to raise me up a faithful priest, Brother David, yeah. that shall do according to that which is in my heart and my mind. Exactly. Did you hear that? Yeah. Can I read that to you again? Thank you. Daniel 6 and 4. Then, no, I'm sorry. Uh, where did I find it? 1 Samuel 2 and 35. And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house. And he shall walk before mine anointed forever. I'm looking for a faithful priest. Right. Somebody that will do according to my mind, my heart, my will, and not theirs. Yes. My Lord. Mm -hmm. Faithful. That's right. Somebody say that with me. Faithful. 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 Think about that word. I want, you to, I want you to think about that this week. Faithful. Faithful. Next week we're going to talk about somebody who... In all of the times you can find the word faithful in the Bible, almost half the times, this man is the one that was doing the writing. This man knew something about being faithful. He opens up two of his letters to two of the churches that he wrote to and says he is writing to the faithful that are in Christ. God's talking to the faithful that are in Him today. Right. Those of us which are alive and remain faithful to Him. Right. Faithful. There's something to be said about being faithful. God has something to say about being... If you want a word out there to get your church excited, something new that you can put on the... What well, they call them? Big projector boards? What are those things? You know, now they put their songs up there, their scriptures yeah. up there. We don't have one. Yeah. Put faithful up there. Yeah. And see if we can get people to strive to be faithful. Because if you can get them to be faithful to Jesus, you won't have to get them excited to come to church. Being faithful to Him, being faithful to him will be enough. It was enough for Granny. Amen. Got to get my washing done. Got to get the cooking done. Got to get the kids cleaned up. Got to get to church because I'm faithful to the house of God. That's right. I'm faithful. God's looking for some people that are faithful. Amen. Amen. True. Faithful. Faithful to Him. Yes, sir. And not just to church. I've talked about church and tithes and offerings and things, but faithful to Him. Mm -hmm. In their heart. In their walk with Him. In their relationship with Him. <laughs> We have so many people committing adultery against God, it ain't even funny. That's right. Think about that. They're supposed to be serving Him, but they half time they are, half time they ain't. How would your wife like it today if half time you was with her, half time you was with somebody else? Spiritual adultery. Yeah. God wants some people that will be faithful right. to Him. Consistent, Brother Sleece. Persistent. Amen. Brother Sleece is faithful. To walk around the pews. Yeah. Brother Sleece is faithful to be here on Sunday morning. Amen. Brother Sleece is Brother David's faithful. Sister Cindy, Brother Scott, they've been serving the Lord a long time. I know them since back in the day. Have you heard people say back in the day before? <laughs> yeah. Well, guess what? I've been through a lot of stuff. I've scraped my knees. They've been through a lot of stuff. They've scraped their knees. But here we are. What is this? January the 6th, 2013? Mm -hmm. We're still serving Jesus. Amen. Because we're faithful right. to our relationship with Him. Amen. 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 Think about that. All them years ago, we was at Sister Judy's, and here we are today together. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. Uh, God's not done. There's a lot more God wants to do. But we're going to have to learn to be faithful. Amen. Amen. We're going to have to learn to be faithful. Yes. And especially in these last days, yes, sir. faithful is going to become even more important. That's right. Amen. It's going to become harder to do. Right. 
Because the enemy's going to try everything he can to keep you from being faithful. You know why? Because he knows the power of it. Because he knows the, the worth of being faithful, Brother Sleaze. And if he can keep you from being faithful, he's already got a kink in your armor. He's already, he's already nipping at your heels. Amen. If I can get him to think it's not important enough. If I can get him to just put God on the back burner. Just long enough. Right. If I can get him to put it off till tomorrow, just one more time. Come on. My goodness. Faithful. Think about that this week. Someone else this morning have something?